welcome everyone to this, the blasphemy debate. Now it's called a debate, but in fact there is no motion and a proposer and opposer, because in a sense this is segued into a discussion in which um, two extremely brilliant minds, well informed, with background reaching across the globe, <laughs> Any moment. Um, are going to present what I hope will be an extremely subtle analysis of the problems arising from, as it says in the brochure, freedom of speech, well, that includes laws of libel, invasion of privacy, and things like that, religious tolerance, and I'm sure we all have in mind the proposed law against incitement to religious hatred, and then the brochure adds multiculturalism, and orthodoxy. So this is a broad canvas and no people more broad than my two guests today. <laughs> Stephen Fry, actor, filmmaker, broadcaster, chairman of QI, one of my favorite programs, and a promoter of tea. <laughs> Just come out with it and say whore. <laughs> Christopher Hitchens, well, I hesitate to describe him. So can we leave that to someone else uh, and just say that in his own book, this remarkable collection of reviews and uh, essays called Love, Poverty and War, he himself tells us that he comes from a long line of naval and military types and that he wakes each morning hoping that he's not fallen prey to premature curmudgeonhood. <laughs> the word I question is premature. But he does use a phrase which I think will indicate what he will speak of tonight, in which he talks about the most toxic of foes, religion. So before we start debating blasphemy, I thought I would ask each of them to set out their own picture, to give us a background into their own beliefs, faiths, uh, and how it has developed or been rejected, and, and indeed where they're coming from. So Stephen yours? Well, I would um, like to be able to offer a tidy description of my views on spirituality, religion, and sectarianism, and so on, as regards my own history, but it's been a very messy one. When I was about 13, I became enraptured by the Anglican Church. I was born technically, if one can be technically a Jew, that's what I am, because my mother is, is all Jewish, um, uh, with Jewish parents, uh, as far as one can tell, and gra certainly grandparents, um, and I will come to that in a minute. I know these things for a fact, which I wouldn't have been able to say three weeks ago. So I wasn't, <laughs> I'll explain why that is. I, I wasn't brought up in the Jewish faith. I was brought up in a no faith at all, particularly my father's a physicist, but not an angrily atheistical one. Um, but as I say, I became enraptured by the Anglican communion, as uh, we, we used to call it, and, and also by... The English mystics, uh, Mother Julian, the author of The Cloud, and Aquinas, and so on. I, I don't know why. I can't explain it. Um, I was a child of fads. Uh, simultaneously, I managed to immerse myself in Wagner and P.G. Woodhouse and Sherlock Holmes. There is no uh, special um, pattern that I can discern. And I have always believed, though, fundamentally above all those things, that I am, a, if not a child of, because we're all children of it, or... Uh, at least those of us perhaps who are over 20, because it's a thorny issue, of the Enlightenment. That's to say, if there is a way of describing knowledge and where it comes from, there have been two roots to it, broad roots to it. One is what you might call heuristic or discovered knowledge, as propounded particularly by Aristotle, but also by Plato and all of Greek philosophy, and rediscovered especially once... Aristotelianism had thrown off the shackles of ecclesiasticism in the 15th, 16th centuries in Europe. Um, and that is, you either find out the truth yourself, that's the heuristic Aristotelian way, by looking at the earth. It's also the mystic religious way some, uh, of a good religion, um, by finding out what something is. Or there is what is called revealed truth, where someone claims authority as to what is true, uh, on the basis, usually, of a text, a sacred text, uh, a scripture, which is just the Latin for a writing, but like so many words, as one discovers it, that are to do with religion, certain ones have been reserved only for, like sin, 
is not the same as a crime, it's reserved for theo theological discourse. And I've always believed that everything that is said from authority is either the authority of one's own heart, one's own brain, one's own reading, one's own trust, but not the authority of someone who claims it because they're speaking for God and they know the truth because it's written in a book. So that essentially is where I come from. I, I just wanted to add on, on the blasphemy side, I had never believed that there was any problem with blasphemy. It was an obvious nonsense to have a law suggesting that blasphemy be, be a crime. Uh, it's often an offense against good taste. It's often unkind. But so many things humans do that we don't necessarily have to make them uh, outlawed. But I was doing a BBC program a couple of, years, a couple of weeks ago, and I was in, um, in Slovakia um, in, a, in a small village south of Bratislava, and, uh, and I was in search of my, uh, my mother's grandparents, and uh, I managed to track down a, a Jewish graveyard in a village called Shurini, and, uh, and the graveyard was... Uh, surrounded by concrete walls and somewhere apparently my great-grandfather was buried there and all the graves were broken and destroyed and it was a it was a ruinous thing and the bodies had been disinterred and I discovered they'd been disinterred for two reasons one was simple anti-semitism um, and the other was simple greed trying to get gold from teeth and from rings um, and this had happened within the last five years. Um, not a Nazi crime, but a, a recent crime. And a part of me then, seeing eventually finding my great-grandfather's broken grave, did make me think, is this, this is a desecration? Is it, is it an act that, say, if we were, if this happened in Britain, would this would be covered by laws of uh, racial cruelty and so on? Um, or it's also a kind of blasphemy against something more than just the Jewish faith, though. Um, and it made me question whether I really was quite so sure that blasphemy was an old-time law for an old-time statute book. That's, anyway, how I would introduce it, rather you. overlong. Christopher. No, I have no intention of being that brief. Um, <laughs> you, asked me, you asked me an autobiographical question. I have a captive audience. They're not going to leave while Fry is here. <laughs> Settle down. I hope you all have a drink and a smoke, as I'm going to have. Um, I consider myself in some ways to have been fortunate in that uh, my father came from a very strict uh, Baptist, Calvinist family. And I think that was the, the misery, probably, of those Sundays was maybe one of the things that made him...